What's good, gamers? Bra weeb grana weeb ninibong YouTube. Red, white, and blue streak here with another review in the first edition of Prime Month. Today we're taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Not to be confused with that War for Cybertron Optimus Prime, or that War for Cybertron Optimus Prime, or even that War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Next time. No, this time we're going back to formula with the original War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. This toy is one of two primes in High Moon's duology of possibly the best Transformers games ever made, or that ever will be made. Start the segment... Transformers! 101, with Red, White, and Blue Streak. It was the year 2010, when High Moon... In collaboration with Activision and, of course, Hasbro, released the first of their third-person shooters starring the Transformers. The game was the first in the set of a new aligned continuity that Hasbro was trying to establish at the time to connect all the Transformers properties coming out at the time. Yeah, that wasn't confusing or anything. The game showcased the Civil War before their arrival to Earth, with this game in particular showing Optimus' ascension to the rank of Prime. The game was revered for its exceptional gameplay, fantastic cast, and amazing story that let you experience the war for Cybertron from both the perspectives of the Decepticons and the Autobots. This game was not only one of my favorite games of all time, but was also one of the main things to get me back into Transformers collecting. I'd love to talk at length about the games, and if you think I should, please let me know. I've been thinking about doing some game reviews on the channel. It's not something that would be too new to the channel, but, you know, it'd be a nice little avenue to explore. So starting with the packaging, I don't have it. Here's a shot of the figure next to the next reviews box instead. Yeah, I got this figure secondhand from Big Ben's Comics Oasis, for a pretty nice price too, like $15. He came with everything. Everything being the gun, which we'll talk about in a second, of course. I always wanted this figure as a kid, but it was very elusive. The only one that I was able to really get my hands on at the time was the Fall of Cybertron figure, which isn't a bad figure by any means, and I do love that design. I just prefer the original design over it. I mean, just look at this guy. A nice hulking figure that just screams, this is Optimus Prime. Unlike some designs, with nice shades of cherry red and very berry blue with bits of gunmetal gray to tie it all together. The little detailing is something I dare say we don't see anymore on most figures nowadays. I mean, look at all the sculpted detail. They even went and did panel lining on the chest and other bits that you see in game to simulate Energon coursing through his... veins? I think they have veins. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they have veins. They have veins. And it's all done in this amazing, durable paint that hasn't even seen a bit of paint chipping since its release. On top of that, most parts are just casted in that color and given a nice, glossy top coat to simulate a paint job, which I think is a nice and welcome touch, always. And it's something that we see on a lot of Magic Square figures nowadays. Minus the glossy top coat, but, you know. Still, it's nice. It means you're not gonna have to worry about paint chipping. Even the gun, which is clearly just cast in black plastic, is given the same gloss finish treatment. Now, as far as I know, this gun doesn't appear in the game. The Transformers' guns tend to just manifest from their being in these games, like they tend to do nowadays. So, maybe this was made during the concept art phase? In any case, he looks alright holding it, and it folds up for... storage in vehicle mode. Maybe a little too easily. The gun has this spring-loaded gimmick that makes it fling back to its regular mode, which is cool, it just means that it doesn't really lock into place for the regular mode or anything. While we're here, we may as well talk about materials. The toy is made with this thinner-feeling plastic that we thankfully don't see on newer toys from Hasbro and Takara, and thankfully don't see on their Studio Series release. I mean, the materials last. This is an over 10-year-old figure we're talking about here but you definitely get the feeling you need to be careful with this thing, even if you don't necessarily have to, which means you'll probably be pretty gentle when posing this guy. There's a ball joint at the head which allows you to go all the way around, and up about that far, and down not so far. The arms can go all the way around and out all the way. There's also this extra joint at the arm that's more for the transformation that allows the arms to shift downward a bit. 
There's a single bend at the elbow that'll get you about 90 degrees. And a limited wrist rotation. There is no waist swivel. But there is a swivel at the thigh. The legs can move forward and back not too far. And can kind of do the semi-splits. Single bend at the knee getting you about that far. And the feet are on a ball joint which gets you a swivel, a slight pivot, a little bit of forward and back, and there is a toe bend. Articulation ain't anything to write home about. There are some bits of articulation that would be considered premium at the time, mainly the ball jointed head, but the lack of a waist swivel definitely brings this figure a few steps back from the steps forward that the head articulation takes for it. I mean, maybe it's something that they improve upon for the Studio Series figure? Yes! One thing they can definitely improve on, though, is the transformation. First, fold the hands in. Fold out the tabs at the side of the waist and pull the ab section out. Rotate the chest around. Start to shift the backpack down. There's a tiny slider right there. You're gonna use that to shift the backpack all the way around to the front without rotating the waist or the top section. Shift this panel on the back of the shoulder down. Oh look! Detail. Shift the arms down on that transformation joint. Rotate the arms so this panel's facing the front. Shift the tires to the front. Rotate the forearm, shift this panel forward and it'll become the front wheel well. It'll tab into the waist like so. Tab the forearm into that front wheel section, put the legs together. Shift the side panel down and the wheels around to the front. Bend those toes up. Collapse the legs and bend the legs all the way backwards so both halves meet. There's a tab here that'll go into that slot and a hook that'll go right behind the front wheel well. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to get these two pieces to come together, which is much easier said than done. Like that, and you can shift the backpack section down and it should look like that. Then fold this panel back and you're done. Well, at least unlike Doomsday, I got a complete alt mode out of this thing. After all that pain and suffering, we have the Cybertruck. Because if Elon can call his string bean AI Optimus Prime, I can call this the Cybertruck, all right? This mode is pretty faithful to the game model, at least from the front. I mean, you can definitely see that they tried for the back, but I mean, not quite. I mean, either way, this thing looks sleek as all hell, and the paint job somehow looks even better here. And despite the conversion, there is something very awe-striking about how everything just folds up and away into this relatively clean alt mode. It's something that you don't really see too often nowadays. Never mind, I seem to have spoken way too soon. And this alt mode rolls phenomenally well. Probably better than anything we've looked at thus far. And I mean, he's got visible head Hello. syndrome when you look at him through the bottom, but it's not the biggest deal. Final thoughts time. The figure overall looks great in both modes. The paint job is done expertly, and everything is done in a material that truly stands the test of time, despite my concerns over it being a little thinner. The gun, while dinky and floppy, like your dad's wig, looks good with the figure. The articulation leaves some to be desired, and the transformation has the cheese touch. It's not doomsday levels of bad, because there was no customization necessary, and I still find myself wanting to do this transformation every once in a while, but it is pretty bad. Especially considering that a lot of the time when I'm transforming this guy, I have to go refer to some video on the internet because I forget how some of the steps go. The resulting vehicle mode, though, <laughs> almost makes the journey worth it. It's a faithful recreation of the game's alt mode, and somehow does an even better job showing off the paint job than the robot mode. I'm gonna give this one a 3.5 out of 5. If you can find this thing at a reasonable price, I recommend getting it. Though there may be some better alternatives out there today.